It doesn't matter how much glitter they decide to roll it in. It still is something nobody wants to buy. Nobody wants to, to read and whatever fascination they have are in lives in the past. And the thing that they don't get, I, I think that they don't understand, particularly say about you know, podcasts, video, all the rest of it, right? Unless you're going to be really, I mean, proper open about your life, right? Like that sort of reality level, okay, too much information or let us into the madness of your life then that's not particularly interesting. And they're not really people that anyone would consider particularly insightful or, dare I say, sort of, you know, public intellectuals to actually tune into yeah. to, OK, how are they going to help my life? Like, these are not, you know, Jordan Peterson-like people. Oh, God. You didn't even mention them in the same breath. So <laughs> you're exactly right. They, Just trying to they have you. no insightful commentary to offer on anything. No one wants to hear, unless they're going to be talking about the royal family, which is mm. how they got their Netflix deal. And it was interesting. You know, we wanted to see the behind the scenes stuff about the queen and so on. Um, no one's going to listen. So if they're going to talk about their lives and their thoughts on life, it's going to be more banalities. That's what we got the first time around. No one actually cares about what Meghan Markle thinks about X or Y or Z. You just want to hear them talk about the queen and what it's like to be a royal. Now they're out of that material, so we're going to be stuck with more lectures on which words we're not allowed to use. Mm. According to who? Meghan Markle. Who cares what she thinks about what words I attempt to use in my life? Couldn't care less. This is why Spotify wanted to get rid of them. This is why they were called the greatest grifters of all time uh, by Bill Simmons over at Spotify. They didn't live up to their deal. They weren't producing more content for Netflix. All these deals are circling the drain. So they went to the no-name far-left organization that signed her up. I guess we're going to get more drivel on feminism, according to Megan Markle, who's done nothing other than get married. <laughs> That's her big accomplishment. Fine, I like being married, but it's not like... That's what a feminist does. We get married <laughs> and then we tell everybody about what we did as a married woman, thanks to our husband's money. Woo, -hoo, me. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> you know, as, as important as marriage is and obviously happy Valentine's Day, here it is in, in Australia from those who love you here. Yes. But uh, it's not landing on the moon. You know, like, like it's like when these people go, it's like, you know, that's something that, okay, wow, really? Only this many and how many, but you know, anyway. Um, now. The View. Uh, Sonny Houston is one of the most annoying people on the most annoying show on uh, television in the US. And she's all about, you know, the far left stuff and racism and institutional racism. She does one of these tests and, oh, oh, what's in her past? I was really reluctant to do it because I just sensed that there could be something in my family history that would be um, disappointing. But what I found out was that my mother's family while um, they are Puerto Rican, they actually originate from Spain. And the reason that they moved to Puerto Rico is because the slave trade mm -hmm. had been sort of canceled in Spain and then Curacao, and then they moved all of their slaves to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And so the, biz the family business, I had been told that they were printers and journalists, but they were in fact enslavers. Mm -hmm. Yes, it turns out her mother is white which she claims she didn't know, and she's descended from slave owners. <laughs> it's amazing. She's been ripping on the United States and, and the, our terrible past, and she's been demanding reparations for, you know, modern-day black Americans, many of whom had absolutely no connection whatsoever to slaves or slavery, but still, they, they need to get paid. And it turns out she's going to have to pay out. She's not receiving anything. She's going to have to pay it out. She says she stands by her demand. She wants the reparations paid. Okay, Sonny, you first. She lives in a multi-million dollar house. She make, she has a multi-million dollar job. Her son is at Harvard, I'm sure, because of her connections and her top-notch uh, education that she provided him in private school, undoubtedly. And she still thinks the country's unfair and needs to pay reparations to modern-day American black people. So it turns out that Sonny's mother, who she thought was Puerto Rican, is white. <laughs> And she was mm -hmm. not, she thought she was black and Puerto Rican, and she's not. She's from Spain originally, and she's white. That, those are Sonny's words and Sonny's conclusions after going on with, he, with Henry Louis Gates, who does, you know, this show on your ancestry. And she's talking openly about how disappointed she is and how mm -hmm. she, she wished, this is why she never wanted to get this done, because she knew she would just be horrified if this were the case, because her mother had blonde hair and is lighter skin and has blue eyes. The horror 
that she might turn out to be white, the disgusting white race for a mom. I mean, it's the only Sonny Hostin or somebody like that in the American left can get away with this kind of talk. Can you imagine a white person being like, never wanted to have my ancestry checked because I was really worried I might have that one drop of black blood in me. The horror, the horror, I never, oh my God, I'm, I'm disappointed, I'm horrified. You would be an obvious racist and called out appropriately. This is not even a footnote in the media that she said any of this. Well, I mean, this is the thing. I've been thinking about this a lot in the past few weeks, right, which is that we know that these people are hypocrites, but it is amazing how hypocrisy does nothing to hold them back. Instead, they're able to sort of shapeshift and move their way through. And also, what about this garbage where she turns around and says, after learning all of this, she had to have a difficult conversation with her mother? A difficult conversation? What is the difficult part of the conversation? Right, I hear you're the shameful race. I'm so yeah. ashamed of you for you being white. You got the poison white. in I you. Can't believe. And now I find out I'm half white. Right, this oh. woman who's out on the view. It's it's actually so wonderful. I love the whole story. Both of our first two stories I love. I love that Meghan Markle's coming out with another podcast for you and for me, not for Jan Pop. And I love that Sunny Hostin has been caught yet again in her absurd hypocrisy and that she's both going to pay the reparations and I suppose receive them. We'll look forward to that transaction at the checking account. Now, of course, uh, Miss Diversity Hire over at the White House, well, she's kind of dropped uh, her boss right in it. Where, well, I think we all kind of guessed that the only reason we got the press conference the other day after that DOJ report came out, and by the way, can I just say, we, we played part of it on, on our show, your dissection of the lies he told in that press conference uh, was amazing, right? I posted on our socials, everyone's got to go and see it, because it's not just you know, the, the, the mistruths that were in there, but basically you were able to say, see, he said this, well, this is what the report actually said. It's a masterful way of doing things and you're, you're the best at it, right? But obviously, the only reason we got that press conference is because Biden still thinks Biden's got it, right? So Biden thinks he's still the guy who everyone's in love with because he owns a pair of aviators and fake teeth. Like, he's a used car salesman from a generation way gone. Um, he's, he's a boxer that's way past it, yet still, I mean, remember, we had the fight between the, the TV doctor and uh, a guy who had a stroke, and the stroke won in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So even if this bloke is as addled as he is, Democrats will still all get in behind him. But surprise, surprise, Joe decided to put Joe's foot in it. My memory is so bad I let you speak. The hostage negotiation, look. Concerns about your age. That is they, your judgment. They, that is your judgment. That is not the judgment concerns. of the press. How can I say this without revealing? <laughs> You know, I guess I just forgot what was going on. And now he comes out and says, oh, the special counsel's all wrong, and this is totally yeah. inappropriate of him to put the mean, mean things in there about me being a well-meaning el elderly man with a poor memory who's, you know, got other frailties that a jury might find too sympathetic to convict on any crime, therefore we can't bring charges against him. Um, as he's trying to defend against all that and saying, trust me, trust me, I'm super smart, he, of course, makes several mistakes, including in that pro he lied in that press conference and then made mistakes calling the president of Egypt, the president of Mexico and so on. And now the whole spin meisters around him, you know, all over the media this past weekend and the, the early this week have been saying inappropriate. There's a partisan hack. This guy, they never said they never objected to Robert Herr before the, the special counsel saying, hey, he's he's too partisan. He's a registered Republican. We can't have that. Well, why is that? OK, because the guy prosecuting Trump is a registered Democrat, Jack Smith. They. They don't seem to think party registration is a deal breaker, only when it's a Republican going after a Dem. And what in the report says he is partisan? Any prosecutor would have to explain to the attorney general, this is why I don't think it's appropriate to bring charges. No jury's gonna convict this guy. Should he not say that? Should he say we've got the grounds for the charges so we must file them and completely ignore what everyone can see, which is that he's too elderly to convict. He's too sympathetic, most likely, to a jury that's not going to believe he could remember all these documents. He should have just kept that to himself, not told his boss, really, Attorney General Merrick Garland, that he had noticed all these significant memory failings. Of the, I mean, that's it's absurd. So what do they do with Joe Biden? They, they put him out there to try to disabuse us of the notion that he's too old. That failed. Then they put out these videos of him try, trying to, like, be a man of the people. They're mm. all pre-taped, scripted. He looks stilted and elderly still, so that doesn't work. So then somebody asked the White House, KJP, the diversity hire, which she admits, um, 
How about a cog cognitive test? Like, could, would he take the thing that Trump took? Because his annual physical's coming up, and last year he didn't take one. And she said, no, she dodged. She didn't say yes, and she just kind of said, well, it is what it is. You know, the doctor's gonna do kind of what he did, which means no. And then they followed up, same thing, got out of bounds. It's a dodge, so it's a no. So if he's all there and he's so great, why can't A, we see a cognitive test, and B, can't he sit down with somebody like me or any aggressive interviewer who would give him a tough time but a fair time to see how he does? He wouldn't even do the Super Bowl halftime interview with Gail King, which would have been not football but softball, one after <laughs> another, and he wasn't willing to do it. So if he's so great, let us see. If we're not supposed to believe our eyes and our ears and, and this report by the special counsel, put him out there. They won't, and there's a reason. Now there's one other thing that, you know, and, and again, you know, we, we went through the detail where um, so many similarities to the Trump situation. I know that the great divergence is about whether as soon as things were discovered, they were handed over or all of this garbage, right? But there's one bit that I did want to talk about with you, which is the, th the bit that I'm surprised that somebody has not been charged is the ghostwriter. Right. So remember, CNN had the tapes of, of documents being uh, 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 handed around by Trump. And this is one of the big things that Waved. we played to a Not jury. Handed. Right? Waved. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, 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 so no, no question. But in this, we know that the, exactly the same thing happened with the guy who was writing Biden's book. But the tapes were erased. But also... The special counsel, doesn't the special counsel say the tapes were erased when they learnt an investigation had begun? So it wasn't like, oh, yes. look, that was five years ago, the book was done, and I just deleted everything. How is that not a crime? No, so there's, that's a key distinction you're pointing out. Trump is being tried right now. He's being accused of breaking the law, among other reasons, because he had a classified document relating to military plans and was waving it around in front of a group of people saying, here it is, this is the plan that General Mark Milley gave to me. I've got it right here, but he didn't show, he's not accused of showing it. Joe Biden is accused of having it, having it inappropriately by any measure because he was never president. He was never able to declassify things as Trump was. And so he would have known this is inappropriate for me to have. And we know he knew because he said to the ghostwriter, oh, this is classified. Let me read it to you. <laughs> you can't see it. But I'm going to read it to you, which doesn't save you. And read it aloud, knowing that this guy wasn't supposed to have access to it. And then once he understood that the investigation had started with the special counsel, the guy deleted the tapes. And the only reason he's not facing charges himself, I believe, is because there are still written transcripts of what happened on those tapes, supposedly, that we can trust. So I suppose that's why he didn't wind up like a Walt Nachua. That was Trump's bag man who helped him with all the documents. Uh, but yeah, the, the, it stinks to high heaven. And frankly, Joe Biden's behavior with respect to his documents was as bad as Trump's up until the point where the feds got involved and insisted on the return of the documents. Biden forked his over and Trump didn't. Yeah, I, I just think there's there's plenty of stench. And if you haven't, go back and see Megan's breakdown of this, which uh, was Friday Australian time. Megan, so good to talk to you. Let's do it again next week. The pleasure's mine. See you soon.